I understand your guys' skepticism in the comments about, oh, there's two Enochs. You're wrong. You're wrong. You know what? Hey, you can choose to believe whatever you want to believe. I know where the Bible came from. I know who's had control over it to feed whatever they want you to believe. I go with the evidence. I'm not going to sit there and just believe something, especially when I know, when I know that the Jews were never slaves in, in uh, Egypt. As a matter of fact, they were the Hyksos. How come uh, Egypt has records of the Hyksos coming in and ruling them? But they don't have one iota of evidence showing that they were the Israelites were slaves in Egypt. Come on, well, you know what? We've are, haven't we already had enough of this sob story? The Jews of oh, you know what? We need we need everybody to you know feel sorry for us because we were slaves in Egypt. You know we were this here, we were that there. Yeah, you know what? All, that's all done and over with. I'm done with their games. I'm done with it. All right, so let's just move on. And see where we're at. Where did we leave off? Kronos. It was Cronus, the, the father of Zeus, who is none other than Jupiter, who is none other than Enoch, who is none other than Baal, who is none other than Abraxas. How is it possible that Cronus is the one who warned this guy of the great flood. Haven't we always been told that it was none other than Inky, the god Inky, who warned of the great flood? That's what we've always been told, right? That's what the tablets say, isn't it? So, how could this possibly be? Well, let's find out. In Mesopotamia, the planet Jupiter, we're talking about Enoch here, was none other than Nebiru. That's right, Nibiru. Don't you remember the tablets tell you that Marduk is none other than the planet Nibiru? Isn't that what they stated? And they say that Jupiter is Nibiru, right? So who is Marduk? Marduk is the son of Enki. The Greeks considered Marduk to be the same as Zeus. So that means that Enki and Kronos are the exact same person. That means that Enki, Kronos, and Cain are one and the same person. Are you starting to are you starting to pick up what I'm laying down here? He was said to be the son of the Titans Kronos and Rhea. Okay? Keep following along because it's going to get crazy. Now, uh, the Chinese have this legend that they actually, they come from a, a dragon race. Um, the year of the dragon was 2012. Very interesting, right? Let's take a look at what uh, uh, one of the Huang Ti. Uh, now, in case you guys don't know, he was one of the very ancient, ancient uh, 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 people who started talking about where they came from and everything. So let's take a look and see what was said. It's an interesting fact, not often noticed, that the ancient Hebrews regarded their race as having been Saturnian. Saturn is the same as Cronus. Cronus is the same as Enki. Enki is the same as Cain. In the beginning, when they lived under the rule of the creator El, that is, the Hebrews honored the same ancestral tie to Saturn as did the Romans. Indeed, the consistency with which each, oh, excuse me, with which early astronomy's identity, identity Saturn as the former creator king is extraordinary. The Chinese mythical emperor Huang Ti, first and great dynasty of kings and mythical founder of the Taoist religion, was identified astronomically as the planet Saturn. Even the Tahitians recall of the god Fetu Tea, the planet Saturn, that he was the king. Many ancient na nations commemorated the era before the fall. Remember that word, the fall. Remember it. But it is significant that originally the Hebrew Sabbath, the seventh day of the week, was the day of Saturn. So was the seventh and most sacred day of the Babylonian Phoenician weeks. Uh, for the Romans, this commemorative day was Saturni, 
dies, Saturn's day, the same day passed into the Anglo-Saxon calendar as the day of Ceter, Saturn, which became our very own Saturday. No god dares to resist his will and El Kronos with his own hands. El Kronos, El Kronos, El Kronos. El of the Phoenicians is none other than the father of Baal. Baal is none other than Osiris, who is none other than Enoch, who is none other than Zeus, who is none other than Jupiter. And just like Marduk with the god Ea or Enki, what is noteworthy is Marduk's symbolic elevation over Ea. Just like when Zeus elevated above Kronos to be to defeat the Titan gods and to place him in the underworld, how is it that it escaped everybody's attention that in the Canaanite story, Baal in the Bible elevated above El for the Jews to worship Baal? So they essentially worshiped Osiris, Jupiter above their very own god who started them out, El, Saturn, Cain. You starting to pick it up now? Marduk has the exact same story with his father as the story with El and Baal. As a matter of fact, Baal was killed by his brother, Yam, just like Osiris was killed by his brother, Set. Okay, you starting to pick up now? So let's take a look at the Vatican real quick and look at this celestial wheel that's right here with the phallic symbol of the obelisk right here in the middle. Now, notice the line that comes this way and notice the lines that go this way, just like the Chiro does of Abraxas, okay, because this is going to be important later, the Basilica and the papal bull are both named after the god Abraxas, and I'll prove that to you here shortly. But this celestial wheel right here, where does it come from? Where does this, study it, study it real good. You got it studied? Let's take a look. Did you study it nice and hard? Do you see the celestial disc right here? Now, do you see these little people right here? And do you see the big giant right here? The big giant. Do you remember... When we were talking about Baalbek, do you remember how the Arabs said that the the guy or uh, Cain came and built that for his son Enoch? Remember, right? So why is it this guy here is really freaking tall compared to these normal people, right? But this is the celestial wheel of uh, um, uh, uh, Shamash, which is the sun god, right? That's his name, Utu Shamash. And here is the sun disk or the celestial wheel right here. Let's take a look closer. You see it? Do you see the sun disk right there? Let's bring it up again. Study it. See it? Okay, so let's take a look. Let's take a look at where this celestial disk really comes from. I even tell you right here. This tablet with the celestial wheel right here with this very tall guy right here. This tall dude. Tablet of Shamash. This is a giant. Tablet of Shamash. Babylonian Sippar. Southern Iraq. Right? Okay. Yet the original reading is not Kronos, but Helios. Who was Helios? That's right. None other than Ra. That's why you see the Statue of Liberty, which is the god Helios that oversees New York, right? Which is to say that the original text gave the name Helios to Saturn. But later copyists who could not believe that Helios was anything other than the sun corrected the reading to Kronos. Certain wise men of India often asserted that the true sun Brahma, the central light of heaven, was none other than Saturn. This in turn reminded us of rarely noted teachings of the alchemists, preservers of so many ancient mysteries. The planet Saturn, they recalled, was not just a planet, it was the best sun. 
Among the Assyrians and Babylonians, the sun god par excellence was the well-known figure Shamash. He is shown holding or turning a great celestial wheel. In the 19th century, the pioneering archaeologist and historian George Rawlinson noting that Shamash was repeatedly associated with the planet Saturn put an exclamation point to the mystery. How is it possible, Rawlinson asked, that the dark and distant planet Saturn can answer to the luminary who irradiates the nations like the sun, the light of the gods? In 1909, the leading expert Morris Jastrow brought this anomaly to the attention of others in a fascinating article entitled Sun and Saturn. According to Jastrow, Babylonian astrological text could not have presented the equation of Saturn and the sun more boldly. The planet Saturn is Shamash, they say. Saturn is Enki. Saturn is Cain. Saturn is Kronos. They are all L. Starting to get it now? Who does the Vatican worship then? What is that celestial disk that is right there in the Vatican? Let's take a look at the let's take a look at um, Abraxas, who is none other than Enoch, who is none other than Jupiter, who is none other than Zeus, who is none other than Abraxas, and let's see how that fits in with the Vatican, shall we? Uh, just in case you guys didn't know that actually Heliopolis, named after the god Ra, because that's what he was called to, by the Greeks, he was called Helios. And that's going to be important, too, because do you remember the video game that we saw with the sign that says the gold, the dawn of the golden age, Helios, Poseidon? Keep that in mind because you're going to need to know it later, believe me. Now, before you guys saying that, it, oh, it, Inky was the good guy, that can't possibly be that he was Cain. I am going to prove it to you beyond a shadow of a doubt. So just hold your horses. Basilisk. The name that the uh, the Vatican Basilica is named after a royal serpent or cock-headed dragon, sometimes as a cockatrice with eight legs, connected with the Gnostic Agatho Daemon or Good Spirit, which was both a lion-headed serpent and a cock-headed snake. The basilisk, however, had an evil eye that turned men to stone, just like Medusa. The cockatrice was said to be hatched by a cock from a serpent's egg. See Abraxas. Abraxas, abracadabra, abrasax, blah, 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 abrac, hadabra. Abraxas representing in Numbers 365 the days of the solar year. In Syria, Abraxas was a form of I am the Alpha and the Omega, Yahweh, Mithras, Sabbath, or Adonis, solar serpent with a rayed glory, or as a cock-headed serpent, or the eastern serpent biting his own tail as Ananta the Eternal. In Egyptian, Abrasix was thought to signify, hurt me not. And the pious Christian Marulus bequeathed to his children an amulet with this name on the one side and a serpent on the other, Jasper. Golden Bula, shaped like a heart, the seat of emotions. Such Bulas are said to be the origin of the Sacred Heart and to explain the name of papal bulls. Thank you. So just like the Freemasons were talking about, right? Two ball cane, you know, the pun. And I showed you about Abraxas, the Chiro of Abraxas, the serpent Chiro. The early pre-Canaanite Phoenicians had a serpent god, which was called the Basilisk. This has been considered an early phallic god, common in ancient religions. An interesting note is that the word Basilic, basilisk is where we got the later word a temple of a phallic god and eventually a type of church the basilica saint peter's basilica in rome carries a remembrance in the form of a phallic ball on the top of the structure stay tuned for the next part and we are going to get closer and closer to the truth that you have never seen before all you have to do is remember the story of poseidon and remember where he came from, and that will give you an idea where we're headed. Thanks, everybody. Well, stay tuned to the end of the video. I will put all links to every single one of these videos in the very last video, and you can read to your heart's content. I guarantee it. I'll put it in there for you, all right?
Oh, shit. 